The dream of rail service between Oklahoma City and Tulsa is still just that, a dream. But passenger service connecting other parts of our state is closer to reality. Steve Shaw reports on the exciting and long overdue plans. Even before Oklahoma was granted statehood in 1907, electric-powered passenger trains called Interurbans hauled freight and passengers through McAllister, Oklahoma City, Guthrie, and El Reno. At the end of World War II, people had more money for automobiles, and Oklahoma's Interurbans quietly faded away. Since 1999, the Heartland Flyer Amtrak passenger train has carried passengers daily between Oklahoma City's Amtrak Transit Hub and Fort Worth, Texas. Good morning. I'll tell you this, we're closer than we've ever been. Brad Henry was Oklahoma's governor from 2003 until 2011. He also chairs the board of directors for something called the Regional Transportation Authority of Central Oklahoma, or RTA. They want to start a north-south passenger rail system between a yet-to-be-built station in downtown Edmond, the Santa Fe Amtrak Transit Hub in downtown Oklahoma City, and the old Santa Fe station in Norman. Henry says it would relieve traffic along I-35. I-35 is just completely congested. I drive it all the time and it just makes me want to pull my hair out. Henry and other members of the RTA this summer attended an American Public Transportation Conference in Salt Lake City. Oklahoma City is the size of Salt Lake, which has already built a regional light rail system that extends from Provo to Salt Lake and Ogden, Utah. Similar systems operate in Dallas, Phoenix, Albuquerque, and Denver. I mean, it's just an exciting thing. What we witnessed in Salt Lake City was an incredible revival of downtown Salt Lake City. When they put in that light rail and that commuter rail, downtown just exploded. Restaurants, bars, entertainment venues, all kinds of incredible things to do. And we're growing, we're expanding in downtown Oakland City as well as Norman and Edmond. But man, it's, if you build it, they will come. And if, if we have the right kind of uh, public transit system, it will just enhance all the other opportunities in, in central Oklahoma. Marion Hutchison represents Norman on the Regional Transit Authority. He says voters in Norman, Oklahoma City, and Edmond will have to approve such a plan, which would raise the sales tax, he says, at least half a cent. But he says since the $550 billion federal infrastructure bill passed last November, federal money could cover more than half, that's right, more than half the cost. A large part of what we will be using for funding is federal funding and that will be coming through the Federal Transit Administration. And so in order to get access to and have the federal funding available, you've got to have your matching money and that's why it's important for us to be able to pass the referendum if we can't have a dedicated funding source that's our matching, we can't get any federal funding. As part of the Norman leg, there would be a stop here, just up the hill from the duck pond, a block and a half from OU's football stadium. And yes, folks, it would run on football game days. If you can just imagine being able to, to park and hop on a train in Edmond and be in Norman for an OU football game, avoiding all that I-35 traffic uh, in about 20, 25 minutes, just a couple of stops on the way. Uh, what, a, what a thrill that would be. Or if you're in Norman, coming to a Thunder game in downtown Oklahoma City or just going out to eat. James Boggs represents Edmond on the RTA board. Steve, the opportunities are endless. If you think about access to the thousands of people that call Edmond home that work in Oklahoma City downtown, just everyday work, but also the students that want access to the universities as well as the community colleges throughout the metro, 
ranging from Edmond through Oklahoma City down to Norman. It's exciting. All of this is really about giving the public transportation options. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. And as you're, it's a good thing our metro's growing. I mean, Oklahoma City's now moved up to 20th in the country uh, population-wise. We weren't there years ago. And along with that comes congestion and, you know, you can put in these systems and you're never going to get rid of highway congestion. It's always going to be there. You're offering people an option for a transportation alternative. And what we've seen across the country is that businesses want to locate in cities that have robust transit systems. Hutchison says the RTA is talking to Tinker Air Force Base about a bus rapid transit system there. Tinker is the largest employer in, in the state. So many of their uh, workers and people out at Tinker live throughout the metro and they find it challenging to get to Tinker just like you know, the rest of us commuting through the, the, the traffic from all the growth. Steve Shaw, The Oklahoma News Report.